Okay, good. So, yeah, I'm Rosanna McInnes, and I am the newest board member at the Soldovia Public Library. And um, I got into OWL quite by accident, not even knowing what it was. In fact, our director quit about two months after I joined the board. And so the president said, hey, Rosanna, why don't you do OWL? I said, sure. I didn't know what I was saying yes to. Uh, but I'm really, 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 really happy I said yes. And I'm having a heck of a time. I'm having a lot of fun. And we're doing some really great things. So that's me. I'm a single mom. Um, besides doing this, I, oh, there's a lot more people in there than I thought. Hello. Um, <laughs> Besides, I've got two, two boys, um, and they're going to school here. We have about 300 people in Soldovia, so uh, probably like a lot of you, very small community, 40 kids in our whole school. My other job is I run the post office, and we'll see how long that, that lasts. But um, hello, everybody, and good morning. And I guess I'll turn it back to you. What's the connection between librarian and post office? Because there's several. It works yeah. really well. <laughs> <laughs> it's that sorting thing. It's the same mentality. Let's quickly, and we'll start with you, Kendra, if you just wanted to say hello. Kendra from Moose Pass. Hi. Hi. Karen from Pelican. April hello. Gabby. From where are you? In Gabby. Oh, see, I'm gonna have to look. I'm gonna have to look some of you up on the map. I don't even know where that is. Uh, Tanya also from Igiagi. Oh, okay, and where is Igiagi? It's uh, Bristol Bay, Lake Iliamna. Oh, you came a long. You came a long way for your meeting. Good for you, and save the salmon. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. Judy from Thorn Bay. Hello. Hi. Hey, speak up Hello. <laughs> Virginia from Cooper Landing. Oh, hi. You, your postmaster is very helpful to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Alana from Chinia. Hi, Alana. I don't. Okay, it's and I don't know where. Oh, you're my neighbor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn from Kaufman Cove. Hi, Lynn. Harold from Kotzebue. Hi, Harold. Hi. I'm Kathy from Toke. Uh, hello, Kathy. Christy DePue from Eagle. Hi, Christy. Hi. Your name sounds familiar. Uh, Kathy Libby from Kitty Lake. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Sharon Abels from Glen Ellen. Hey, I remember you, Sharon, from the other <laughs> night. Thanks. Hi. <laughs> Stevens from Hello. Hello. Anisha Elby from South Nacnick, also a postmaster leave replacement. <laughs> <laughs> We're hanging in there. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, I didn't get to say hello. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's Asia. And oh, hi, Asia. Oh, hi, Art. <laughs> And um, if you have a chance, every one of you needs to pat Artem in the back because he does a lot of a heck of a lot of hard work for these uh, video yeah. teleconferences, and uh, he deserves <laughs> at least a pat on the back from everybody. And, and hi, Matt too. And Matt too. And Matt, and Matt too for sure. Hi, Matt. Hello. Matt's the one that convinced me to stay on the Barbara Bush video teleconference, so I love him for that. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Um, does everybody know where Seldovia is? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to, one of the resources I use a lot is the OWL Project um, Internet page. So I'm going to do an experiment here and switch over to the page and show you the page. You've probably all seen it already, but I'll point with my arrow to where Seldovia is and tell me if you can see it because I'm interested on how this goes. So, so I'll switch over really quick for anybody who doesn't know where Seldovia is. Here we go. All right, are you seeing my computer screen? No, it's no. not. Okay. There you go. 
All right. It, it seems like there's always a couple seconds delay. Can you see the owl page now? Yes. 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 Okay. This page has incredible impact and I use it every time I do a presentation. And one of the best things about it is this really impressive picture of the state of Alaska that shows every single location where there's a video teleconference site and a library. And when I show it to people here, it, it's really impressive to them. So I just wanted to point that out. But uh, can you see my cursor? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to point to where Soldovia is. This is Kodiak. And Soldovia is on the very, very tip of the Kenai Peninsula. And to get here, we're land locked, glacier locked, like a lot of you. And so to get here, we have to either, you have to take a Cessna airplane or you have to take a boat. And I know many of you um, are in the same situation as me, which is another reason why this is so, so great, because the cost of getting this kind of um, um, quality of pre presenters into our little community is basically unattainable. We, we couldn't do it otherwise. So, okay, I'm glad that's working. I'm going to switch back to just me now. We're going to test my skills here and see if I can do that fairly easily. Oh, oh, okay, yay, okay, um, please ask me questions because I am scheduled for an hour and a half and I'll tell you ahead of time I don't have an hour and a half of stuff to talk about so feel Rosanna, free to... There has been a change of plans, it was an original plan for an hour and a half, now you're scheduled for just one hour. Oh, that makes me feel a lot better, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. um, so um, a little bit about the history. So Shane asked me to talk to you about marketing in a small community, and um, I was really flattered that he did. Um, the biggest key for me is it's something I'm passionate about, and I thought what I would do is talk to you exactly about how I've been doing it here, and maybe it could help you with what you're going to do in your communities. Um, and so the very first part of our history was, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Okay. Was our library is uh, just had its 75th anniversary and in its entire time it had never once ever, ever had a paid employee. And the scope of the work that OWL was bringing into our library was really, really big. Um, so our first battle um, in terms of selling OWL to the community was to actually try to sell to our city the I idea that we could really use the OWL funds to help get the IT paid IT position and then that way um, a lot of this work could be done. So the very first battle was um, in terms of selling OWL was to go to the city I had to have several, um, I would call them arduous meetings with the city manager um, where I had to smile a lot and I had to use a lot of big names. <laughs> Shane, your name got mentioned and he looked you up in a database. <laughs> um, in, in any case, um, um, that was the first key to the success here because as an all-volunteer library, and I'm sure probably many of you are, are similar, it's a big deal to expect somebody who is uh, volunteering a couple of hours a week to come in and all of a sudden you're asking them to double or triple the scope of what you have expected them to do before. So um, I wanted to know, does anybody have an IT person that can help you with your rollout? If you do, you should use them. So does anybody have that here or are you all small enough that you didn't get that? Anyone? We have. Eight positions, IT eight positions, yes. Yeah. One, one one person does. Right. Okay. Right. We, most of us do. No, we have, no, no, we have, no, no. We have we, most of us have the IT and IT person through OWL. Oh, okay. Some of us and, do not. Yeah, yeah. some don't. Some people okay. are the IT. So, so, are the IT people. <laughs> we I have, have received I've received I, so um so um, we've made so much progress by having that, and I've received so much help by 
every time I had a problem calling. I, I want to tell you that I never got no for an answer. Anything I ever needed when it came to OWL, Sh Shane never said no, Matt never said no, Artem never said no. I called Amy multitude of times, Amy never said no. Um, so don't be afraid to ask and I'll tell you that if any of you have questions or want help um, and you call me, I'm probably not ever going to say no either. I will probably be very willing to help you. So that's my first, my first point. Um, so anyway, in come the computers. We had really old, really terrible owl, um, old computers and um, it was, they were shiny, they were new, they worked, there was a laptop. Now people used to view our computer section in the library as out of date. It didn't get much use except for the kids to play games. And now we had this laptop sitting around and, and people were going, what's this? Where did it come from? So yet another reason to talk about OWL. Um, but the real uh, excitement didn't happen until um, my video teleconference equipment came in the door. Um, so before I talk to you about that, I, I, I'm out of practice with PowerPoint, but again, I wanted to see how it would show up, so I made a little PowerPoint slide, and it's going to recap what I just got done telling you. Take a look. Tell me if you can see it. This is my first piece of advice to, to all of you. Can you see it? Oh, no, no you can't. Yeah. i got to push the button. Okay, you should see a gray screen. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. All yes. right. My first piece of advice, and if you have to take notes, this would be something to take a note on. Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm. Yeah, I'm fairly easy. I'm I'm not I'm not tough, but um yeah, that's my number one first biggest piece of advice. I have never found the folks on the Owl Project anywhere to not be willing to give help. So uh, there you go, PowerPoint slide number one, and you can see it. Um, okay, off it goes. Okay, so. Now what happened, this humongous video teleconference screen and the big huge cart, they had to be flown over in these little tiny Cessnas, came in pieces, they got delivered here and my eyes about popped out of my head with fear and trepidation because I could not figure out how in the world all by myself I was going to get this thing together. So to um, piggyback off of what I just said, I dialed up, I said, uh, is there anybody who can help me? And sure enough, they, um, they did have some people who could help me, came down, got it all set up, and the, by the next week, I was using it. Um, so my question for everybody in the room, you all have your equipment set up? Is there anybody who doesn't? You, ha uh, you don't yet? We never set ours up. We have the cart set up. And the equipment's out, but we haven't set up the, um, like, tested the video equipment yet. Okay. Anybody else who does not have it set up? So, oh, so doesn't have it set up. We have, okay. we have the um, equipment and the cart, but we still have a internet broadband um, issue. We're still on old internet. Okay, so that's really nothing you can control um, on your end anyway. Um, but for the two ladies in the middle, um, and Shane's still there, I would be willing to bet that if uh, after we talk here, you get together, you think you can't do it by yourself, I'd be willing to bet if you talk to Shane about it, he'll find um, help for you. Am I right, Shane? Sure, yeah. do what? <laughs> um, help people who haven't got their stuff set up to get it set up because for me that was the scariest biggest part really once it's set up it's really easy to use so the yeah. scary part is just getting it in the door and, and and getting it together so ladies that would be my um, advice for the two of you is ask him if there's a way he can help you
with that. Okay, so okay. Um, um, so getting it in the door and getting it used, I put it to work right away. I put I did not want to wait, and that's because I had been to the conference in October, and I got really super excited when I went to that conference. I saw how much support there was. My brain started thinking of all the possibilities. Um, and that is the next slide I'm going to show you. I had possibility after possibility running through my brain, but it wouldn't do me any good if I couldn't get the people in the community here to come in the door and to see it. And um, I will tell you that the very best thing is to have people see a video teleconference in, in action. You can talk until you're blue in the face about how great it is, but until they come into your door and they see somebody sitting a thousand miles away from you talking to you, they don't really get it. And once they see that, it's like, ooh, cool, ooh, we do want that. And I will mention in an aside that Shane has a very professional and commanding um, demeanor, and so I've asked him to help me on a couple of mine, and people respond really well to him. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I would say, again, use your, so here's my next slide. Here we go. <coughs> uh, my, my next notes for you when you're rolling this out to your community, Oh, excuse me, I skipped something. I thought about, before I, I did the meetings, I thought about who do I need, who do I need to get this out to? And I, I kind of made a mental list of my, what we call stakeholders. And the very first and very most important group was my staff. Um, you know, again, we have all volunteers, and a number of them are not very computer literate, not very tech savvy, so... Uh, the idea of operating such equipment is pretty scary for them. And so the very first presentation I did before any others was I did one to the staff. And um, for that, I called Amy Marshall from Craig. Is she in the room? No. Okay. I called Amy Marshall from Craig. Um, you may or may not know, but Amy is featured in a video that the Gates Foundation made. And that video, in combination with the website and a live video teleconference, is my secret. I, I always use those three things. Um, and so I got Amy to come on and talk to the library staff, and she told them about everything she had been doing at the Craig Library. And now they got really, really, really excited. And I will say to every one of you, I will do the very same thing for you. If you want to roll out and have a meeting and you want somebody from another small village library to talk to your community members, I would love to help you with that. I'd be very happy to do that. Anyway, think in your head, who, who are the stakeholders? And, and that's who you want to try to present to. This is, in Soldovia, what mine looked like. Um, and is my PowerPoint coming through okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so far, I have made presentations to every one of these groups. I've been busy. Um, and I, I didn't uh, try to do it all at once because um, in a small town, you know how it is. Everyone is doing five things. And if you have one meeting and one time to roll it out, odds are you're not going to get everybody. So I had to go to them. I had to go to the city and say, when's your next city council meeting? I want to go. I had to go to the chamber and say, when's your next meeting? I, wanna, I want, would like to invite you to come and see me. Um, the school was my hardest one to get in the door. I worked on them for two months, but I got them to come in. So what I'm saying is don't be afraid to do it multiple times. For me, um, that was key. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten everyone in here to see it. It needed to be on their time, and it needed to be really addressed towards them. The other thing I did is when each group came in, I thought ahead of time about uses for that group. You know, so when I was talking to the city council, I talked to them about using the equipment for training EMTs and for fire training and for boat safety. 
And boy, did it, it make them happy because they were thinking dollar signs and how much money they were going to save by not having to fly people in here for those things anymore. And when I talked to the chamber, I talked to them about using it to draw tourists in. When I talked to the, the school, I talked about including um, educational enhancement. So anyway, um, don't be afraid to have multiple. Try and try again is what I'm saying. Keep trying. People are grumpy and they're busy. And um, <laughs> don't you think so? Especially yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> so, and if you have to ask them three times, four times, that's okay. I did. Uh, okay, so that was my next slide. And here's another one. Um, and this is how I do my presentations. I never do them alone. I do them using the resources that OWL has provided. So I'm going to tell you what they are, and I'm going to show them to you. So um, when I begin my presentations, I always, like I said earlier, go to that OWL website. I show them very first the map. I'm going to, um, now on the website, there's a document and it's called the OWL Talking Points. So each present time I do a presentation, I've printed this thing out and I kind of use it um, to, to help introduce the program. So I'll show them the website, I'll read some of the information off of the Talking Points document. And then my favorite thing to do after that is to show them the Gates Foundation video. Can you raise your hands if you've seen that video? Oh, good. Most of you have. A few of you haven't, and I'll show the gals that haven't. I'll show you where it is. The reason I like that is because it's very professional. It's made by the Bill Gates Foundation. It impresses your community members to no end. And they love the fact that it's made in a small community just like ours. They love to see that something in a small town, very similar to my town and your town, is being talked about. And it kind of gets them to thinking. So um, I, I use those three things. And from that point, I switch into a live video teleconference. And this, and this again, again is the best the way best to do it. Way to they, they once they see, once it, they used, see it used, they, they um, um and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting sorry, really, I'm bad really bad echo. echo. Oh that's better. Can you still hear me? Oh that's ten times, oh, that's better. 10 times better. Yeah, we can still hear you. We moved the mic. Okay, thanks oh, a lot. Thanks a lot. They love to see it, and it's very impressive. So poor Shane has had to talk to people in my town about four times. I called Amy Marshall. I had Amy talk to my staff. And I had a, a lady from CILC, her name is Tanya Carragher, talk to my school teachers. Um, I can't impress upon you enough that in order for people to buy off on this equipment and to understand it, they need to see it being used and um, they really, really like it when they see it. So again, remember you can call me and I'll talk to your community about how it went in Soldovia. I would, no problem. So um, I want to show you the OWL website one more time to show you where these things are that I'm talking about. Can you see it okay? Mm -hmm. If you can't remember the website, you all just have to go to Google and type in the Alaska Owl Project, and it comes up. So I told you I show them the map first. I tell them about all the libraries. And then watch my, can you see my pointer? Yes. Okay. 
That is the document That's... I'm talking about. It's a it's three a... or four page document with key points about the OWL project. So you can open up that document and use that for your notes for your presentation. And the other thing is if you're uncomfortable doing it, you could let me do it or you could let Shane do it or uh, Amy or whoever you <laughs> asked to come on. <laughs> right, Shane? <laughs> I should have a slide that says pass the buck. No. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, yeah, totally. I don't mind doing that. Um, but for you, it's good to know that it's there. And now most of you had seen that video, but at this point when I'm doing my presentation, I'm done with the talking points and I tell my group that I would like them to see um, the video. And did you see I just scrolled down to the bottom of the page and there's the link right there. And there are two choices. The one I like the best is the first one because that's the one filmed in Alaska. And um, for the two ladies that haven't seen it, I'm going to click on it and play you the first couple of seconds of the video so you can see. I I'm not going to play the whole thing, but this is how I get to it when I'm doing my presentations. So here you go. It's the first couple of seconds of the video. And you can also see how a straight video going over a video conference is not a very good idea. Oh, yeah. It's probably fuzzy. Mm. Slow. Can you see it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Thousand oh. miles from Anchorage. You want to talk about rural? <laughs> I have friends who live in dry cabins with outhouses and no running water <laughs> and no electricity, let alone internet. Okay, so what I do, or Shane said it's not a good idea to stream the video, and we experienced that the other night in a conference from Juno. But how many of you got laptops? Yeah, so I, I don't, I plug my laptop into the back of the video teleconference equipment. It's directly through the internet, so there's no delay. And when they look at that video on my big video teleconference screen, it's crystal clear and beautiful. So um, it, it's really impressive because it comes out just shiny and beautiful and pretty. And especially for you communities who live in a, a water town on Kodiak Island or in the south we, west, um, east or in Bristol Bay or on the river, um, you can see um, it makes sense to people who live here because they they can relate to this. So those are my three things. I use the map and the website. I use the talking points and then I play the video. And when the video is done, that's when I switch over to video teleconference and um, I, I hand it over to Shane or Amy or whoever's doing it. So, does anybody have questions? Well, one thing that Amy, or that Rosanna said that is so true and I think so important is that she referred to herself as having a passion for this. She came to the, she came to the training, she saw what it could do, she saw the potential that this can have on her community and she developed a passion for it and I think that's what Kind of we all need to do for this. Um, and I, I also like what she said about, you know, people are grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, she was very persistent and got in front of the right groups. And, you know, I feel like I'm on a first name basis with her library board and her city council and her chamber of commerce. But that's what that's what she did. And it, and it works for her community. And, and, you know, she, she's got Tanya Carrier and she's got Barbara Bush and, you know, she's just been really good. And, and this is how she did it. And whether that works for your community or not, I think it's a really good model to follow to get 
you know, you have to market, you have to get out there, you have to put yourself out there, you have to be, deal with grumpy people, and you gotta just make it happen kind of thing. That's what she did, and it's been really effective for her. I have a question. I don't think she can see me. Um, what is your plan after the the money for the IP, IT position goes away? So I've been really thinking about that a lot, and even Amy and I have talked a few times, uh, you know, not purposefully so, but, um, you know, when I had to try to sell it to the school, they asked me the same question, and, and so here, here's my thought. What are there, 25 of you in the room there? And, and there's me, so that's, let's say, 25 of us all together. Okay, so the money goes away, and I still really want to do these video teleconferences. Well, guess what? If I can get four of you to link into a video teleconference with me, the cost of the video teleconference is no longer $125. It's $25, and, and uh, my bake sales can cover that. Uh, so my, my future thinking is to, to keep making it work, there's a couple things we can do. And A, it, that's collaborate and keep collaborating. Um, work together, work together, work together, work together, work together, because um, the more, and plus the, it'll affect more people, you know? We'll have five towns doing a video teleconference from the Sea Life Center instead of one, or four instead of one, and we can split the cost. But the other thing is it doesn't all have to be CILC, and I wanted to um, talk to you too about uh, if anyone, anyone is interested, uh, I put a request out on CILC for a collaboration. It's free. You can do. You can ask for whatever you want. And right now, I have a group of um, students uh, in on a border town in Texas, Laredo, Texas, waiting to to um, give a present a cultural presentation on their life in Laredo to children here in Alaska. I have two more classes on standby in eastern Tennessee, way up in the Blue Mountains, kids who uh, would never uh, in their wildest dreams imagine a trip to Alaska who are waiting to video teleconference into us. Absolutely free, no cost. And if anybody is interested in either of those two opportunities, please tell me because um, uh, they not only want to uh, video teleconference with us, they want to work on a long-term basis in terms of pen palling or letter writing or writing projects. So this is just, uh, and all I had to do was ask. It's the same thing as before. It was like Barbara Bush. I just said, well, I guess I'll try it. I asked, and the answer was yes, we got it. And um, two weeks ago, uh, one of my children got to talk live to Bar Barbara Bush. Um, and I, it, it, this was easy. I put the request out, and within a week, I got these answers. Um, so um, I guess my answer would be, to make it work, we have to collaborate. And to make it work, we have to be creative. Um, and I'm, I'm actually, I, that's all, that is helpful. I, I'm thinking, though, more of the IT position, the what is your city going to do when the money for your specific position goes away? Do you Will you still be able to devote the time that you're devoting now? Well, so part of my passion is a little bit selfish, and part of my vision is to, um, to encourage enough people to realize the value that they might consider a, a, a better set of support for our library here. And in fact, we've already seen that in that be, beneath me where I'm sitting right now is a basement that back in the 60s and 70s used to be used as a judge and a courtroom and for three decades has sat unused. And because of OWL and because they could see the value of it, we made our first huge step in that the city council um, approved that we're now able to expand our library. And so I guess to get the support, you have to make people see the value. And that's where we are right now, is we're at the point where we need to show it to people, talk to people about it, and, and help them understand how valuable it is so we can keep sustaining. And yeah, it's a little scary to think about not getting paid, but quite frankly, um, I really, I really love it, and I can't see stop working, um, not working on it. 
but the other thing is I'm, I'm training other people to love it too. And I don't, you either love it or you don't, but I'm training other people to see the value so that my support here will, you know, I've got at least three or four other volunteers now who have come in and that can use the equipment. And as I go along, I'm trying to show them. So it's a, it's going to be a big battle. There's no doubt about that, but, um, but it can happen. Yeah. Is there other questions for her? And then when, when, when you went to the city council and you went to your chamber of commerce uh, and presented these ideas to them and wanted to show them, what was their reaction? Um, you know, a lot of the people in the room, my dad included, he's 82 and he's got tenure on the council and he can't even turn a computer on. Uh, well, if I could say it poetically, his eyes were like little puppy dog eyes, big, bright, look what this is, whoa, you know, they really were impressed. They were really, really impressed, but they don't see and feel the, that until you use the equipment. I could talk till I'm blue, I could show them all kinds of videos, I could show them all kinds of websites, but it was not until I put Shane on or Amy on or Tanya on and they got to interact live that they, that they lit up. And then they, it was like, oh, I'm on camera, oh. And they wanted to, to, to talk and they wanted to be heard and they wanted to, to be seen. So yeah, use, if you're gonna roll it out to people, you have to plan on using it as part of your presentation. It would be my best advice, yeah. Were you able then to get them to come to the library to, to see your presentation and, and experience the video? Yes, in every case. Um, my hardest group was the teachers. You know how busy they are in a small town. Yeah. And, you know, I wasn't easy on these folks. I talk about it nonstop. I talk about it so much that everyone here can tell you what VTC stands for, and most people in my town know what OWL is besides something that goes hoo-hoo. <laughs> um, I talk about it all the time. And like I said earlier, three, four, sometimes I just had to keep asking. I really, uh, some, some of the groups were tough. And, but what helped was once I got the first group in the door and that was the Chamber of Commerce, then those people went out and they started telling the other people to where they were like, well, okay, maybe we'll come, maybe we'll come. And so once you get your first one in the door, that'll help. And Sue talked a little bit earlier to you all about the, the lodges, and that's one of the purposes of that, is to bring people into the library and be able to show off the equipment, and, you know, we'll start going, and the word of mouth gets out, and pretty soon, you know, things start to happen, so, and, and to be honest with you, we have probably 60 libraries online right now. And most of them are participating, some of them more active than others, but there's only a handful, maybe three or four, that aren't doing anything. And so most communities are using it, you know, some, like I say, some really extensively, some not so much, but they're using it. And like I say, out of 60, we probably have like four or five, five that I can write up hand that, that don't do anything, which, you know, that, the bad. percentage isn't bad. And we wish everybody would, and we want everybody to, and we're not satisfied that everybody's not, but we're pretty happy that we've got as much participation as we do. Yeah, I would add, it's, it's really fun. Uh, we have done a preschool one with Amy and Craig a couple of times, and it is really fun for the participants when we have multiple sites on there. Um, they really like that. And that's one of the things we're working on is doing a uh, preschool sharing between the libraries um, that do the story hour with us. So again, if that's something you're interested in, let us know. But the, we noticed that the kids were so interested in each other, um, besides what was going on on the video teleconference, we thought, well, we're gonna give that a try. This is just a logistical question. When you bring your groups in, what size area do you have in? 
uh, how do you set it up? Your yeah, <laughs> that's a good question because that was logistically and is a challenge. And um, until we get our furniture moved to our new space, every time I do a conference, I've got to move furniture around. And I'll tell you, again, we're around 300 people in this community. So I've done numerous of these, but every one of them, um, the most I had was probably around 22 people. So um, logistically, it's not a lot of fun, but I'm getting good at it. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so if you have a dedicated space, I'm really happy for you. If you don't, you might want to think about how you can do that. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely it takes a little bit of work. It's this area that you see me in now. It, it, it either has pillows and teddy bears on the floor, or it has chairs, or it has a desk. I change it every time I'm doing it, yeah. <laughs> it's normally an area where we read. It's a, a sitting area where there's magazines and a, a desk for working. And she, in her library, she has the big 50-inch monitor. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. Um, How big do you have? Yeah, yeah, it's a big one on a cart. Rosanna, do you have a problem with the kids wanting to go up and get their hands on the screen? Oh, yeah. Um, my TV is on a, it's about a four and a half foot um, rolling cart. or So I haven't had too much of a problem simply because it's too tall for them. Um, but they, yeah, really I haven't, I haven't. And I do want to say that after doing a couple of them, I realized I needed to do a better job at laying out um, the rules for video teleconferencing. Is for so many people, it's their first time or it's a brand, brand new thing. So it was a failure on my part to not address the groups every time. So I now do that. I say, this is the microphone, this is how it works, and you don't want to move, and if you move, this is where you move, and if it's the children, I talk to them about um, not talking over somebody else. So uh, that's a recommendation I'd have, too, is decide what your rules are, and that might help with the touching of the screen, too, and, and make time for um, going over those rules before your video teleconference starts. And I would say another thing, I am sure your community is no different than mine in, in that, I will call it generically, we move on Alaska time. And um, so if you have a video teleconference, for example, that starts at 1030, do not tell your community that it starts at 1030 or they will come at 1040. You know, doesn't it work that way? So I, I always tell them it starts 15 minutes ahead of when the actual start time is. <laughs> yeah. So well, what do you do with your when you're not using it on that cart? So it is handy that it's on rollers, and we um, don't have uh, a lot of space for it, which is why we're happy to expand. Um, but it rolls um, behind, kind of behind our our counter where we uh, the volunteers do their work, and it is a little bit in the way, but um, we love it so much we don't mind. Mm -hmm. So do you have to close off the library access while the conferencing is going on? I have not yet ever done that. And, and the reason is I'm really, really interested in the most amount of people seeing this stuff in action. Um, and wow. so I have, I have not ever done that. Now, if I had a case where somebody was doing some, we were proctoring a test or doing something special like that, I, I would take special care. But at this point, this I like people to come in and see it and go, what's that? And look at it. Um, so no, I don't. Although, again, we're going to expand in our space downstairs. We'll have this thing mounted, and we'll have a sitting area for it, and we'll, uh, we will uh, be able to have a, a more quiet area here, and the video conferences can go downstairs. Um, but for you, uh, in the beginning, yeah, for me that worked really well as people would come in not ever having been here in weeks and they see it and they take an interest in it and, and voila, you very easily expose somebody to it and then you can talk to them about it because inevitably they yep. say, what are you doing? And then you, there's your chance right there. I even had a lady who... Uh, 
they, there's an art class that meets here, and uh, she is um, suffering from uh, dementia a little bit, early Alzheimer's. And she walked in not knowing. It was a little confusing for her, but it happened to be um, um, Cleveland Museum, and we were doing Japanese art. We were doing origami. And this lady is probably in her 80s, and she's, she was so interested in it. She sat down not only and looked at it and enjoyed it, but she folded up the beetle and the box, and I mean, it was really great. It was really good. And, it, and that one was by accident. Any other questions for her? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice job. I, uh, thanks. I, I actually do have one more slide I want to show you. So. Um, I'm glad, I'm glad you talked about this a moment ago, Shane. So here we go. <laughs> I, thank you, everybody. And call me, please, if you want me to talk to your groups. I would love to do that. Amy helped me, and it made a big difference, and I hope I can do that for you. But here's my last slide. Ta-da! <laughs> And, uh, nice Are we leaving now, Rosanna? Um, well, there's another one. I thought that was my last. I, I am. I have to get back to the post office and get the mail up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and you. there's Thank my. You. You're welcome. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. There's my, my data.